Welcome to my lecture online. Our next example can get quite messy algebraically. Not necessarily hard, but algebraically very messy, so we have to be careful how we approach it. The example, the integral of dx over a plus bx times c plus fx. Now, in most integral books, instead of f, they'll use d, but dx is quite often misinterpreted as the differential of x, so I'd rather use f instead of d. So this becomes dx divided by a plus bx times c plus fx. And so what that means is we can take this and write that as two separate integrals using the special method called partial fractions. And so what we end up with then is this, 1 over a plus bx times c plus fx can, can be written as two separate fractions like that. And all we have to do is solve for a and b. Now again, algebraically, you really got to keep track of everything carefully. So notice if we multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator, we get 1 equals a times c plus fx plus b times a plus bx. We multiply everything out, and then we realize that the constant 1 equals ac plus ba, and 0, because we know that we don't have an x term on the left side, will be equal to the coefficients of the two terms that have an x in them, so 0 equals af plus bb. Then if we solve those equations simultaneously, we end up with b being equal to f over af minus bc, and a being equal to minus b over af minus bc. Notice that in both cases, the denominators are the same. So we're going to then use a constant, k, to be equal to af minus bc, so we can very easily then write b as f over k, and a as minus b over k, and then we substitute that back into our two integrals right here then we realize we can factor out a 1 over k, so this becomes as follows. This is equal to 1 over k times the integral of, and I'll put the minus in front, so we have b dx over a plus bx. You know what? I think I'll leave the negative inside, and you'll see in a moment why I did that. I'll leave that inside. And then plus 1 over k times the integral of f dx divided by c plus fx. And then when you look at these two integrals, notice that in the denominator we have a bx here, and we have a b dx in the numerator, which is the differential of the denominator, and here we have an fx, and in the numerator an f dx, which is the differential of the denominator as well, which allows us to integrate those two. So on the left side we get this is equal to 1 over k, times the negative, and I'll guess I put the negative there anyway, the negative natural log of a plus bx plus 1 over k times the natural log of c plus fx, and of course we have a constant of integration. And then if we factor 1 over k, it knows we have a negative natural log there, we can combine those two and write this as 1 over k times the natural log of we take the positive one and write in the numerator, c plus fx, divided by the denominator, a plus bx, plus a constant of integration. And then, if you really insist, we could then go back and rewrite what k is equal to. So this can then be 1 over the quantity af minus bc times the natural log plus a constant of integration. And then notice that would be the final result of that particular integral. So sometimes it's a little hard to keep track of the algebra, but once you do it correctly, the rest isn't so bad. And that's how it's done.